Beirut is booming. After a brutal civil war and another clash with Israel four years ago, sections of the city were little more than rubble and gutted ruins. Now investors are flocking to the thriving metropolis. But with all this progress, the past eras of Beirut's grand old homes, otherwise known as castles, are being forgotten. We're going to two castles that uh, have been protected recently, Hanani and Ziyadi castles. 22-year-old architect Naji Esther is appalled with what he's discovered. The whole movement of saving Beirut heritage uh, applied pressure on the owners, on the municipality of Beirut to stop this uh, the demolition of this castle and to stop the, the, the destruction of those sold castles here. Naji and fellow activist Pascal Inja are driving a new campaign to rescue Beirut's architectural soul from the hands of developers. Come, come, come and see. Already, many irreplaceable treasures are gone. Come and see what left. Look at uh, the stone. It was a beautiful Lebanese house, a beautiful one. While skyscrapers tower over family homes in a city that dates back to the Phoenicians. I feel a little bit sad and kind of angry because, you know, this house is, is like a prisoner between like two giant, two monsters. Naji is documenting homes he believes should be heritage listed. This building dates from the Turkish mandate, from the design and from the windows and from this arc here. And his sources tip him off to any potential demolitions which he quickly reports to the authorities. If we don't protect it, it will go, like all the rest. So I take pictures and send them to the directory of the antiquities in Beirut, and they discover if they can save it or not. Khaled al Rafai from the Department of Antiquities has the challenging task of trying to preserve Beirut. للأسف في بلدية بيروت مثل بقية الإدارات اللبنانية بتخيل أنا إنه ما في رؤية لبعض ما في رؤية شاملة ما في رؤية مكتملة كل نحنا بلبنان شوي نعمل ببرياك بيرياكشن يعني نعمل برياكشن. Even the home of Lebanon's most famous singer. Beirut was under threat. This is, was uh, Feirouz's home. She was to live here. But they, they, uh, they planned to destroy it, but we stopped them. It was a mansion, a beautiful mansion with uh, red, uh, red tiles and stained glass. And uh, it was abandoned during the war. And then they sold the land to uh, someone who wants to invest in skyscrapers, maybe. I'm not against construction, but I'm against the demolition. I'm against the destruction of all buildings and old houses where the tradition and the culture of my country are vanished away. It's, for me, it's a crime. The people came to me and this is a very important important thing. وبالتالي يبيع أراضيهم يعني يبيع العكار تبعهم أو هدموا هن يعملوا مشروعات عكارية عليهم تدور عليهم أموال كتير وفيرة لأنه عم يطلع له 30 طابة وحتى أوقات أكتر هيدا الجهد اللي البلدية كونها هي المرجع بهالموضوع هاي لأنه البلدية إنه ما حطت حد لهالتوجه العمراني هيدا لتشجيع الاستثمار العكاري لأنه مثل ما بنعرف أيضا إنه الاستثمار العكاري بدر 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 مردود وفير للبلدية. There are people who say that Beirut is becoming another Dubai. Well, in Dubai, they, it's different. Beirut Mayor Dr. Bilal Hamad is proud of his city's successes. Most of the construction that's going on is 
uh, actually to solve the problem of uh, uh, residential apartments. Okay, so it's different than Dubai. You, are you aware that uh, there were 1,200 protected homes and now the, the figure is 250 protected homes? If you see only a nice hickey uh, arch in a building, this doesn't mean this is uh, a building that has to be preserved. But then some of the buildings, I, uh, they bring some report. I have, for example, a building and I have a structure report from one of the most important structure engineers in the country. And the bottom line is this building cannot be repaired. So what can I do? How can I repair it? Downtown Beirut, once a crater-strewn and mine-ridden wreck, it was the first centre to be rebuilt after the Civil War. The entire project was handed over to Solidaire, a dual public-private company with powerful government links. Where we are standing was a no-man's land with weeds and uh, demolition everywhere. The Solidaire urban planner, Amira Saleh, takes me through the rebuilt city centre, where only a third of the traditional buildings were salvaged. But the jewel in the company's crown is their newly opened Souks district, an historic meeting place and commercial centre. Of course, it's all historic buildings, and then right at the end, you've got a new modern building with a view open to the sea. Luxury clothing shops, though, are a poor substitute for the original souks, according to veteran environmental journalist May Abi'al. <laughs> يلي وعدونا سوليدير انه ترجع مثل ما كانت منطقه الاسواق هي كذب هيدي كذبه كبيره هول مش اسواق بيروت هيدا مول هيدا مول ومسمينه اسواق بيروت you know this is where the controversy becomes of how what what is heritage and what is heritage buildings and definitely at some point there's going to be disagreements about what is kept and what is not and you know it was a very destructive war, so it's also about the cost of preserving uh, destruction versus the ability to rebuild. And with no properly enforced planning laws, owners of traditional Lebanese homes find the developers' money just too tempting. Even when homes are protected, many owners purposely allow them to fall into disrepair to get them off the heritage list. But there is some hope in sight. Preserving our heritage is not preserving a house. We're preserving who we are. Salim Wardi, Lebanon's Minister for Culture, is an activist within the government. He understands the financial temptations faced by property owners, so he's come up with a novel solution, allowing people to sell the space above their houses to developers in other parts of the city. If you have a heritage building that's, that is now constructed of four-story building, and the area now allows a 10-story building, you can sell these stories that doesn't exist and are not gonna be built into a certain area that we will allow to have skyscrapers in, this plan is part of a new law that, when passed through the parliament, will finally protect Beirut's heritage. We are the only country in the area that hasn't passed a law to preserve these houses. So you expect the law to be passed sometime this year? While we're waiting to, to, to see the law passed, we're trying our best to preserve the heritage building we still have. We have freezed all uh, all licenses to tear down buildings and now buildings are being teared down are being very selective and we're not allowing any heritage building to be torn down. But even with the freeze on demolitions in place, the fight is still far from over. This new ad campaign, a collaboration between Naji Pascal and Minister Wardi, is increasing the pressure to get the new law passed. The activists are also taking their campaign to the streets.
The event will be uh, a symbolic uh, walk in, uh, in a symbolic uh, street, uh, Jemaize. Pascal and Naji led a crowd of 300 people down the iconic Jemaize Strip. I've known Beirut in times of war, I've known Beirut in times of peace, and I think that Beirut in time of peace have been more disfigured and destroyed than in time of war. I understand people want to build new things and make new money, but boy, there's some wonderful stuff in Lebanon that goes back to the Mandate period, the Ottoman period, that just ought to be preserved, or you have no more Beirut. The protesters stop at sites they refer to as crime scenes, where traditional buildings have already been lost. The cinema may be gone, but this movement is hoping that the destruction of the city will also be a thing of the past, leaving the spirit of Beirut still intact.